Sheep farmers are hitting back at vegans. Veganuary, the campaign to get people to go vegan for one month, reckon that by the end of this month, half a million people around the world will have tried moving to a plant-based diet. Sheep farmers say the Veganuary campaign is misleading and misguided. So let's bring together a vegan and a sheep farmer. Phil Stocker is a sheep farmer and chief executive of the National Sheep Association, which represents the industry. And Ed Winters is an animal rights activist, also known as Earthling Ed, who wants to see a vegan world, don't you? Yes, I Yes, do. okay. Good morning, both of you. Thank you for talking to each other. Uh, Phil, tell Ed what you say is misleading about Veganuary. Okay, so I think it is within everyone's right to uh, choose the sort of diet that they uh, should eat. Uh, I just think that a lot of the facts and the, the, um, the statistics that have been spread around are, are misleading. I don't take into account the fact that our sheep are being produced in a very natural way. Uh, they're producing a, 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 a very nutritious product. And I would argue that they're actually um, contributing to a positive environment rather than damaging uh, the, the planet. You know, so a lot of the stats and the messages that are going out are simply misleading and don't reflect the way that sheep farming is taking place here in the UK. Before you respond, what's the, one, what's the thing that's the most misleading in your view? Be specific if you would. I think it's that, um, that eating meat is damaging to people's health and yet we know that as part of a balanced diet it's a very, uh, healthy, um, it's a very healthy way to keep yourself in good order. I think there's, there's two things to consider. Now. There's is the environmental point that you, you kind of first put forward. Um, there were two studies released last year. The first was the most comprehensive study that ever looked at the relationship between farming and the environment. Um, it looked at uh, 119 countries and 40,000 farms, and it revealed that the vegan diet or a vegan lifestyle is the single biggest way that we can live that reduces our impact. The second study was the most comprehensive study ever conducted between food and the environment. And it said that in this country, in the UK, not America, but in the UK, we have to reduce our pork our beef and our lamb, lamb consumption by 90% to avoid meeting that two degrees Celsius threshold rise, that'll be mm. catastrophic. So actually when we look at the science that's behind these, these issues that we're talking about, it's very much stacked in favor of a vegan lifestyle. Okay, pause. Can I come back on the environmental damage and the methane side? And for a long, long time, uh, ruminants, uh, cattle and sheep have been criticised for um, putting methane out, which is a, a greenhouse gas. Recently, there's been some studies that have been done that shows that methane reacts in a very, very different way to carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide that comes from fossil fuels. And if you think of methane coming from rum uh, ruminants, from animals, it's just part of the natural gaseous cycle that this planet has learnt to adapt with, has adapted to cope with over thousands and thousands of years. And if Are you we were, coping with it? No, absolutely not. I mean, if we look what the United Nations is telling us, we look at what some of the most prestigious and respected bodies are telling us, the Lancet, we're looking at the University of Oxford, we're looking at Harvard, we're looking at the Nature Journal, the Science Journal, all of these studies and all these institutions are saying very clearly that actually animal agriculture is the leading driver of so many environmental problems that we're facing. And it's bigger than just methane emissions. We're looking at habitat destruction, species extinction, water pollution. Mm. Um, so it, it's bigger than just that contained aspect we're talking about. I would say a lot of that science is flawed and, and it's fairly new. We're dealing with a subject that isn't necessarily that well understood. But based on what? What, um, what, 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 what scientific bodies are you referencing to make that claim? Uh, there's some information that is coming out of Oxford University at the moment that is going to go into the IPCC report that actually makes the case that methane is a, has got a short-term life cycle yeah. uh, of around between four and ten years, whereas uh, uh, the greenhouse gases from carbon dioxide are much, much longer than that. So methane has got this cycling thing where, it, where, where the gases are released, the planet adapts to cope with them, and then they disperse, they dissolve, and obviously more methane is being produced. So we would argue that the, 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 the numbers of sheep kept in the UK over the last 40 or 50 years have not contributed at all to greenhouse gas, to, to, climate, to global warming. Um, they, 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 they're at an e equilibrium. I'll read a couple of emails. Uh, Deborah says, sheep farmers have a vested interest in flogging the nation, decaying flesh of a species of God. It's a scientific fact that a well-balanced vegan diet will lengthen your life expectancy. We're no longer in the Stone Age. Uh, Mark says, the health benefits or disadvantages are of no interest to me whatsoever, actually. I do not want to be part, though, of the cruel and violent animal exploitation industries. Considering the impact on ourselves in order to make the decision is symptomatic of the real issue, which is speciesism. And Johnny says, before we even see your item, if the farmer says he loves his sheep, I'll groan. Do you? I absolutely do love my but sheep. He I goes on, you can't now, deliberately breed baby animals specifically to die in a state of terror and say you love them. People, oh, you, people and, 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 hang on, let me finish. People naturally eat meat 
but just be honest about where it comes from, pain and terror. How do you respond uh, to that? Absolutely not. I would argue that uh, sheep are almost the, in this world when we're trying to be, try, trying to uh, uh, find sustainability, sheep are almost the ultimate in renewable technology. You know, they, most of our grass is grown with no more than sunlight and rain and soil. Most of our grass is not treated with any agrochemicals or fertilizers. It produces grass that ruminant sheep come along, uh, eat, and they convert that into high quality, pro high quality protein, um, vitamins, uh, minerals. Um, Cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fats, cancer promoting as part hormones. But eating a part of a healthy diet along with vegetables. It's, it, it, there was a, a health practitioner's conference in Cardiff back in the new year yeah. and 96% of those health professionals agreed that uh, red meat as part of a diet was a, a healthy way to sustain ourselves. And yet studies coming out from Harvard and Cornell and other very prestigious institutions have very, very clearly shown there's a direct correlation between consuming these products and our leading diseases and illnesses. And I really want to get back to that point about looking after animals. The, the, in the lamb industry, up to 6 million baby lambs die within the first three days of being born in this country because farmers breed them to give birth in winter so they can capitalize on the spring lamb tradition. That's which absolutely not correct. It, it, that, that, let that's him the, respond, let him respond. He is, is a sheep farmer. That is can, absolutely yeah. not correct. I mean, by far the majority of our sheep lambing in, in late February, March and into April, if anything, over this last five years, lambing has shifted later into the season so that sheep farms can become less reliant on inputs and feed and, and just work alongside a natural growth pattern of the grass in the seasons. So it's absolutely not right that they're pushed to lamb early for the, for the spring Trade. That statistic comes from the National Disease for Animal Inspection Service. So it's not it's not a, it's not a biased thing. This is a, this is a organisation that works within the industry, and they say anywhere between ten and twenty five percent of newborn baby lambs die within the first three days of birth. And that's because you're capitalising on a vested that, interest to make a, money from a very profitable time of year. It's a different issue, actually. I mean, we, we do have losses. Yet again, a, a semi-natural farming system where lots of our sheep are out in almost semi-wild conditions out in, in the hills. Um, you know, you're bound to get losses, and we do get losses with lambs. But that's, in a way, a trade-off of them living in a very natural situation. Okay. You can reduce those losses by bringing them indoors and housing them and going into a more uh, intensive intensive direction but we wouldn't want to do that going to pause there just because we're coming to the end of the program sure, but thank you very much both of you uh, ed and phil thank you for talking to each other